12 plus years of experience in web development. Uh, most of my experience is in web development. Uh, other than PHP, I work on Python as well as DevOps. Uh, I have more than 7 plus years of experience in Laravel, so I am, I think, the early guy here. So I started working on Laravel in 2014, version 3.4. Uh, still now, I am using Laravel. So it's kind of only, I, I prefer to work only on Laravel, even though I get some other opportunities. So I work as a full stack developer uh, with DevOps and everything. Uh, currently, uh, I am a CTO of Bitefish Technologies Private Limited. At the end, we are having a use case where I will elaborate how we have implemented multi-tenancy and uh, how much traffic we are accumulating and everything. Uh, also, I am working with a US company, uh, Great Scale Venture, from last two years uh, as a remotely. Uh, and that's it. Let's dive into multi-tenancy. So today's topic is deep diving into multi-tenancy. We'll uh, cover uh, why we need multi-tenancy, what are the benefits of it, what are the drawbacks, comparisons with other packages, and then uh, how to configure tenancy for Laravel, why I selected that package, uh, and some use cases, as, as well as I have added some few questions just to keep everyone, uh, everyone enthusiastic or involved. So after three, four slides, we have one of the questions. Uh, it is just uh, to keep everything, everyone uh, into the moment. So, so these are all things we are going to cover. Uh, Multi-tenancy comparison, tenancy for Laravel, what is two applications, SaaS boilerplate, tenant identification, managing data, and most complicated thing uh, that I face is uh, setting up a server. Uh, because for my case, uh, we are having uh, backend as a Laravel and frontend in Angular. So it's again a uh, little more uh, complexity. So I will try to show that how I implemented it and use cases. That's it. So first thing is, what is multi-tenancy? Multi-tenancy is a system architecture that allows multiple customers or as a tenants to share same application infrastructure. So system design in a such a way that it's shared, it's not dedicated or isolated. So mostly people working in a WordPress, they already know shared hosting and all this stuff. So in a multi-tenancy, it's an architecture where uh, we share the resources, CPU, database, uh, and everything. So it's like uh, we, uh, we live in an apartment or society where uh, we have our own space as a flat, uh, and then we share some of the amenities like gym, swimming pools. So multi-tenancy is similar kind of it where we have we uh, share some resources as well as we have some private space as well. So uh, one of the uh, basic idea uh, when I started implementing multi-tenancy is Slack. So everyone here uh, almost know the Slack and the thing they have is your workspace.slack.com. So it's subdomain multi-tenancy so for each of the customers they provide one uh, workspace or subdomain so we have implemented similar functionality and as you can see i have many slack accounts byteface laracon india ctbs uh, whenever i open it open like byteface.slack.com ctbs.slack.com so it's subdomain as well as multi-tenancy and uh, we are gonna uh, get through the case study of implementing uh, or uh, having subdomain as well as multiple databases uh, tenancy system so okay so it's just setting up the momentum most of you uh, already knew this like uh, whereas and it's very irritating uh, when we have complex queries it's getting bigger and bigger now anyone knows uh, how we can simplify it in one statement it's very easy most of you already used it, but you just like don't remember. We can replace it whereas with a single line statement. <coughs> so, yes, fair relation. So, uh, this is just the just a tricks. Just expand this answer. So, we can rewrite this as a single line statement where using where relations, relationship names, then uh, column name, conditions, as well as uh, the gate method. Okay, so next, uh, back to tenancy. 
So inside a tenancy, we have multiple approaches like single database, multi database, uh, multiple domains, single domain. Then uh, inside single database, you can store tenant ID and uh, uh, make them separate. So uh, basically, it's single database as well as multi database. So inside the multi database, this is the multi database for each of the tenants. We have separate database. Okay. So missing part here, we can say we 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 need one more database for administration like central database that we are going to cover next and another is a single database so inside here in each of the table we store tenant id so uh, like uh, if we have users each of the users will have a tenant id uh, field and we add global scope using global scope uh, we we keep we keep isolation so risk there and problems there in a single tenancy is scaling like uh, whatever data currently i have i am glad i i took this decision uh, not to go with single tenancy because with millions of records uh, it's very difficult to scale then again customer my might request okay i want uh, this infrastructure to run on my premises so or my database security and a whole lot of things so with single database, there are some problems that uh, problems as well as the benefits of single data, single ten, a single database tenancy is it's very easy to set up and you can start immediately using it. Uh, the problem start when you uh, have enterprise applications where millions of requests comes, thousands of tables and everything. So that's it. Then again, next. Benefits of using multi tenancy. So, first thing is it's cost effective. Now, uh, what I mean by cost effective, suppose you have uh, this multi tenancy system implemented like a Slack where each user has its own subdomain uh, and then each user has their own database and everything. So, you don't need to host it multiple times. You can host it on a single server, on a single RDS instance uh, for a database, and uh, in that way, uh, it's your DevOps over overload is reduced, your cost is reduced, uh, maintenance is reduced, and some of the things like uh, backups takes more time, migrations takes more time. These are the challenges, but yeah, uh, cost effective uh, you, because you are sharing it. Then uh, data isolation. Now, a challenging thing is with any multi tenancy, whether it's single database or multi database, is that I don't want my customer A to see data of customer B. Okay, and there are some hacky ways people try to uh, address like someone just try to add someone else URL or guess someone else URL and we have to prevent that. So data isolation is the critical part implementing any uh, multi tenancy. Uh, easy to scale, why it's easy to scale? Uh, like uh, I have hundreds of customers, uh, multi tenant systems and one of the customers is a uh, uh, is using system super high he's having millions of uh, records daily now i don't want to uh, i mean i can give priority to that particular tenant uh, or i can have some pricing like okay this is the priority customers and i can set up separate rds instance for that particular constant uh, customer so that the performance is uh, improved so these are the some ways easy to scale then customizable so what uh, multi tenancy gives you the customization what i need is if i have 100 customers my customer one wants okay i need uh, these invoice names like tax invoice someone says uh, tax receipt or something else they want some settings uh, to be handle their own uh, work workflow so they wanted to have a customizations so uh, uh, we can easily add these customizations like if tenant is this, then only show this. If tenant is that, then only show that. So multi tenancy provide this customizations. So uh, in terms of efficiency, reduce the overhead of managing multiple instances and uh, better resource utilization. We already covered that. So these are the benefits of using multi tenancy. Next. <coughs> so these are the three popular packages uh, in Laravel for multi tenancy. First is tenancy for Laravel that we are going to cover. Uh, second is Spatty. Again, uh, we don't need introductions for Patty. So they have uh, hundreds of packages and then high tenancy. And each one comes with their uh, 
focus what they wanted to achieve. So with the tenancy for Laravel, it offers both database as well as subdomain tenancy. Okay. As compared to Spatty, it's just uh, focused on database tenancy. Okay. It uh, with a uh, Spatty, it provide bare essential uh, infrastructure to get started on a multi tenancy and uh, uh, very easy to use Spatty. We can say with a tenancy for Laravel, uh, it provides a flexibility uh, in terms of event-based mechanism, pipelines, and everything. You can customize anything. Like you want to identify tenant on uh, full domain, subdomain, request parameters, headers, anything you can uh, you can change. And it's most popular, uh, one of the most popular uh, package for uh, multi-tenancy. And again, Laravel IDE also supports it. The only uh, multi-tenancy package it supports is Laravel IDE. Uh, is a tenancy for Laravel. With high-end tenancy, it's focused on database separation. Again, it's again uh, provide the identification on domain and subdomain, uh, but testing is nightmare. With tenancy for Laravel, testing is easy. It provides the skeleton as well. So these are the things, and uh, we are going to go through why I selected tenancy for Laravel. I thoroughly uh, done a uh, uh, demo of each of one, and then I selected tenancy for Laravel. So one of the reason, next okay so question first <laughs> so uh, when i started writing laravel i used to write this most of the people whereas post uh, where published is one and then post uh, where published uh, with count or uh, yeah this condition and relationship we have to write it twice like whereas and with we cannot write conditions on with itself so uh, is it's simplified as with fair as so it's introduced in nine point something uh, previously uh, if we have to write query as well as uh, do uh, relationship we have to write it in a two separate sections like uh, whereas and then uh, with currently it's possible using with whereas it's just a tip so we'll just continue on <coughs> uh, why tenancy for laravel so there are few reasons one of the reasons I selected is its flexibility and uh, compatibility. <coughs> so it supports multiple uh, multiple uh, way of configurations. Like uh, you can have single database as well as multi database. Again, uh, multi subdomain uh, and mixed mode. Like I have uh, hundreds of tenants, and inside one tenant also I can configure multi tenancy. So that's very very much flexibility so how we can configure that okay it's uh, like subdomain specific tenancy and for any of customer you wanted to have suppose branch so on tenant one you can uh, again implement a single database tenancy with branch id and it's possible so it's one of the reason i preferred this uh, then again tenant uh, impersonation so what is impersonation is uh, we have suppose we have hundreds of customers and customer reported okay this functionality is not working as expected so there is no way for you to identify what's wrong so tenant impersonation is that uh, with a four five or ten lines of code you just provide one option one option where uh, impersonate that and then you can select i want to log in as log in as any of the users they were using so it's just um, allowing you to troubleshoot issue and functionality uh, without needing credentials. I, I can't ask my customer, give me your credentials and I will check. So this impersonation is the way where you as a super admin log in as a, any customers from any tenant. So this is uh, one of the great things provided by this package. Easy to integrate. Uh, I can say uh, it supports most popular packages from the SPATI like media library, activity logs, then related to Laravel. Horizon, Telescope, it's by default provided. Again, Nova, you can easily integrate. We already integrated Nova as well. Uh, ready to uh, integrate because uh, I mean, uh, with ready to use, it's uh, very easy to set up. We also get boilerplate. We are, we are going to cover that later part of uh, the presentations. Community, I can say it's very nice community. They have Discord channel where people chat about it the difficulties help needed and everything and uh, it's very active community 
uh, it helped me a lot when I uh, started implementing this as well as they have githubs. Uh, interesting part uh, here is event system. So what is event system? Whole of this package is implemented as an event based mechanism and job pipeline. This is one of the example of job pipeline. So if you open tenancy service provider, you can see this job pipeline where it runs uh, all these jobs in a sequence. Like whenever uh, any tenant is created, it first create the database, then migrate database, seed database, and you can add your own job, like sending email or uh, clean up or something. So you can add any number of jobs and it will execute for that sequences. And all these pipelines are there like uh, different events, like tenant created, tenant deleted. So you can uh, configure it by your own way. Like uh, even you can configure like, if no tenant is found with a slack, I don't remember my URL, I don't remember my workspace. So they provide you, uh, just put your email and we will provide you uh, where all accounts you have. So it provides all of these benefits with event based mechanism. And I, I always feel any frameworks which handles events very well, which is really uh, robust and use very flexibility to configure it uh, like uh, whatever way you want. So inside this uh, multi-tenancy, this concept is very important, two applications. So what is two applications uh, in tenancy for Laravel? Uh, what we have is one central database and n number of tenant databases. For each of the customers, I am creating the database. So if I have 400 customers, 300 customers, I will create 300 databases for them. And there is one central database which does these identifications like okay, this tenant has this URL, this tenants expire on this uh, time, this tenant uh, have this uh, subdomains and uh, like payments and everything. So central domain is like for admin where uh, you can impersonate any tenant uh, and with the central applications, uh, okay, what I like about this package is uh, you have central models and you, uh, central models in terms of uh, models which uh, which are the part of central database and you, if you just use central connections by default it will change the tenancy like i have tenants if i query with that model everything under the hood uh, tenant changes and everything happens so in a central uh, uh, central applications everything executes on a central so what, what i mean central is like uh, it's my single application, central application where I have admin. So I can have a separate cache. It need not to be uh, the same cache we use for tenants. I can have a separate cache, separate file systems, uh, separate queues, and everything for central uh, applications. And I can have, I can use different whole lot of uh, queues as well as uh, cache and everything uh, for tenant applications. So uh, this, this is the very important thing. Like it separates these two applications. You don't have any uh, common queries. You cannot run, uh, ideally, uh, it's not good practice to run cross database join queries. So again, it creates some problems as well. Like I need to have uh, do some synchroniza synchronizations. Like if any users is created in a tenant, I need to know it on a central database. And there are ways uh, to handle this in this package as well that we will cover later. So this is the central application on tenant database. Uh, a tenant application runs and you can configure all the services for uh, tenants. Okay. So uh, this was the thing. Uh, usually we need to run a query on a two different columns of the same table. Like I wanted to get all the tasks where created at is greater than updated at. So uh, I wasn't uh, knew this this exists. I usually uh, writing raw query, but again, this is one of the thing that you can use. Okay, so uh, when I started implementing this, uh, when I uh, taken a decision to go with this package, um, I decided, okay, if I have to start from the scratch, it will take at least a month for me. And rather than spending month implementing and setting up everything, they have one option. It works. Uh, I mean, you can configure. It's open source, so you can configure by your own. 
or you can get SaaS boilerplate. So SaaS boilerplate is a ready-made app they provide to you, which has multi-tenancy with central database and a number of tenants you can create. It also integrates NOVA, Telescope, and everything. So uh, complete sign up flow, how it works, you, you will also receive the emails. So what you need, you just need to change the email templates, uh, some configurations like how you want to name the tenant databases and everything. So I use this uh, SaaS boilerplate. It cost, I think, $200. So with the $200, you get already implemented uh, multi-tenant system that you can configure as per your need. So it, it includes complete sign up, NOVA, domain management, ploy integrations for uh, deployment. I didn't use that, but it's there. And then tenant aware test suit, uh, ready-made and cashier billing. Uh, which which uh, you probably know cashier is one of the Laravel package which manage uh, recurring payments and billings and everything. So you can go with SaaS boilerplate as well. <coughs> so for any of the uh, multi-tenant package, how we will identify this request belongs to this database or this tenant? It's a critical part and this package give you n number of ways to identify it like domain identifications if i want i can uh, provide uh, i can run this software on customers domain so this is domain identification where inside the central database i will provide okay uh, biteface.com if it's uh, if it's a domain then uh, use this database database number 1 again subdomain identification it's like slack biteface.slack.com so or abc.slack.com so it also supports subdomain identifications you can use combined like domain as well as subdomains like as a service you want to provide this facility like run on your own domain it will charge you 5000 uh, extra rupees so with this service uh, combined domain and subdomain identifications subdomain is the default one and you can charge for running it on domain to customers so uh, I, I was actually using number three combined domain and subdomain identifications. You can also configure inside the request uh, one parameter uh, which will help you to identify okay, this is the tenant. So, for mobile app or anything, you don't have a URLs. So, you can uh, do tenant ident identification using uh, request data as well as manual identification also. You can implement your own logic to identify the tenant with whatever way you want and then path based identification as well so okay now we covered uh, we can identify tenant using url we cover we can identify uh, tenant using uh, some request data or uh, path and anything now question comes to the mind i wanted to implement the functionality to send a daily email it's a common need now this daily email it will it's again a schedule uh, console command that you will run and that needs to be um, that needs to be uh, uh, that needs to be in each like each of the tenants like I wanted to send my customer uh, how much payment they received so for each of uh, the tenant it has to initialize tenant uh, get the data from their appropriate payment table and then send the email so this was the uh, this is the one of the package which provides this tenant aware commands. So you can configure the commands to be run as a uh, on a particular tenant or run on all tenants and it will automatically initialize the tenants and query on that appropriate database. So below is the way just expand it. Okay. So PHP artisan tenants run. This is my command name email send and if I, I want to run it on a particular tenants I can specify hyphen hyphen tenants equal to one comma two so i usually use this to run the migrations uh, like <coughs> you you created something and you want to test you don't want to run it on uh, 20 or 30 databases so i specify the tenant if the migration is successful then i will just remove this and uh, uh, the migration will run for all the uh, data tenant databases so this is one of the way and this is for uh, running it on all tenants PHP artisan tenants run email send. Okay, so this tenants is the command this package has provided 
so running the migrations seeds and everything you get all of these commands uh, and it's the flexibility of this package which provide commands also tenant aware because there is no request there is no subdomain so one of the reason i selected this okay uh, when i start any of the project or work on any of the project when i started i don't have this uh, features available available but any of you when you start this project it's bonus always try to set these features it will help you in in number of ways so first is prevent lazy loading you you oh, you might already know what is lazy loading in plus one problems um, by default if you set model prevent lazy loading you can disable only it on productions uh, then mass assignment as well as uh, accessing mass uh, missing attributes all of this you can set individually or with a model should be strict i think it's again in laravel 10 they provided it and one more thing i i would suggest is to use enforce morph morph map uh, so you might heard a polymorphic relationship like uh, i have comments table comment table table so comments can be uh, can belongs to post comment can belongs to video comment can belongs to images so i don't create three tables like uh, post comments video comments or image comments i will just create comment table table and then inside that i can uh, store uh, comment table type and comment table id so it's polymorphic relationship but if you don't enforce morph map it will store it as a app models post and problem is that uh, if you change the name space it will not work if you refactor the model it will not work so in forcing morph map uh, what will do is if there is a request for this model it will automatically store it as a post so it's again trick okay so next thing is managing tenant specific data uh, we covered each of the tenant can have their own database we have central database and everything now critical part is all these needs to be tenant aware like each of tenant have their own database they they need to have separation in a file system caching and queue so uh, database it's by default uh, i mean uh, when you have multi database system uh, with request identification path identification it will identify which database i have to use and it will run by default all queries on this with the file system you can also configure okay for each of the tenant i can uh, specify some prefix or i can uh, uh, create separate buckets for them so that each of the tenants uh, files or images can be separated and this is the beauty if any customer ask me okay i want all of my data or infrastructure to be run on my machine i can easily uh, uh, remove it from that or we can copy it all the buckets and uh, data database and run it on his own infrastructure with the caching i uh, usually i will suggest to use redis cache the reason is <coughs> for caching internally it uses tagging so each of the uh, entry it stored or retrieved it always has a tag and that tag is nothing but the tenant id so that way it has isolated cache from one system i don't want like i have customer 1 as a blue cat and customer 2 as a micronix i don't want micronix customer to view the list of customers from uh, blue cat and we, if we have catched something from micronix it needs to be returned to the micronix only so this is the uh, it's handled using uh, cache tagging uh, for queue queues are also tenant aware if you execute any queue like send email or send welcome email from tenant it will automatically run on a tenant database it will automatically initialize that tenant file uh, Uh, dehydrating the models so these are the uh, key features you want these separations as well as isolations no one will trust you it like blue cat can see the customers of uh, anyone else so it's the risk while implementing multi tenancy you always have to make sure that session hijacking uh, or uh, accessing cross tenant database so it's one of the challenge while implementing multi tenancy okay here comes limitations and challenges uh, we talk about why how it's done uh, ways to do it but there are some challenges 
uh, we need to consider while going with uh, multi tenancy the first is uh, data security so uh, like uh, isolation i don't want my customer one to see the data data of customer two so this this is a uh, very critical in any of the tenancy not speaking about this tenancy in as architecture it's tricky part to handle scalability and performance can be challenging when dealing with large number of tenants uh, like if you are you are going to have have 50000 tenants 40000 tenants you can always scale on a aws by paying extra money but it's challenging um tenant aware testing so writing tenant aware testing is complex uh, i started writing test but later uh, it's again paused so testing on each tenant like you made any change you have to test it on multiple tenants as well whether this change migration was run successfully uh, is any of the tenant affected you might have some plans like for tenant one i have a uh, standard plan tenant two i have enterprise plan some of your code or customizations is depend on a uh or some of your own logic is depend so uh, you always have to at least test two tenants not a single tenant because migration might run or uh, migration or seed uh, only run on particular tenant and not on other uh, in terms of devops um, these are the issues i have faced so configuring multi level ssl certificates um, it's easy when you do it first time but it's challenging why uh, for me because i have angular application which is running uh, on a front uh, running the front end and it's it needs ssl as well as uh, my back end it also needs ssl and it's again two layer my api is running on uh, bluecat api api bluecat.api.byteface.in and front end is running on bluecat.byteface.in i will show the example at the end so it was challenging to configure ssl certificates but later when i know uh, when i knew it uh, i configured it by let's encrypt open source as well so uh, i i use aws for this service because it renews automatically certificates uh, with the pwa uh, we we have some issues where it's showing the url because uh, assert link wasn't working because of dynamic subdomains Uh, it's again in research uh, we are working on it uh, migrations and backups are costly because uh, if as number grows it will take time to migrate running migrations on a single database and running migrations on hundreds of database so this is one of the challenge uh, it will it will have while uh, multi tenancy so uh, apache setup for apache or nginx it can be anything i was comfortable with apache so i prefer and again it's never ending discussion should we go with nginx or apache or anything at the end what you know is the uh, key so <coughs> it's uh, pretty much easy and i have provided example example.com star.example.com runs this virtual host so with this my example how i have configured is okay my backend runs on api.byteface.in so this is itself is a subdomain and all of the alias like uh, bluecat.api.byteface.in it will identify separate tenant which will run my backend and for running the front end i have different directory different repo and everything so i have star.byteface.in i have sequenced it like uh, api first and then uh if it doesn't found api inside uh, the alias or server name it will fall back here and run, render my front end so yes next <coughs> so um uh with my experience uh, i just wanted to uh, have some uh, use case from byteface where i implemented this multi tenancy uh any number of cases how many databases i might have any numbers <laughs> around 20 okay so i have more than uh, 445 databases uh, it's yesterday's figure so uh, for uh, i mean having that many databases 
and everything when i started i felt it's going to be nightmare but uh, uh, what i like about is you don't have to worry about the infrastructure this use the services and it's very easy you don't have to worry like i i don't have to copy for 45 uh, backups manually it's automated with the rds and everything so yeah we have 445 uh, databases we are going to have a live demo of it and again number of tables so it's uh, very uh, very much high figure because if i have i am going to have 445 databases and each database almost have 80 plus tables so uh, these are the number of tables i think 36490 database tables so all of these running on a single rds so any guess what my rds configurations needs to support 445 databases as well as uh 37000 around tables okay the last question <laughs> <laughs> so 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 we will go with approximate traffic per month <laughs> so any estimates on approximate traffic per month <laughs> okay so we'll first expand this approximate traffic so uh, this is the last month approximate request 1 crore 25 lakh 95000 so it's more than 12 12 million request per month we are currently serving uh, uh, with our uh, infrastructure and i uh, when i initially thought the multi tenancy i thought i will need lots of uh, a lot of heavy ec2 as well as rds instances but practically it's not if you configured it properly uh, we initially have uh was having the bills uh, how many of you know that aws have startup discounts one year one year so for one year they they provide you free uh, uh, free infrastructure so aws activate the program name is aws activate so first year went very well and then later uh, we started to get the huge bills <laughs> and each month we uh, uh, i spent some around 3 4 hours on uh, minimizing the cost and uh, again with whole lot of these databases and tables we just have rds instance of medium size so uh, it's a medium size where it's just have 4 gb of ram and two virtual cpus and yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> that that we will cover at the end of the month so, uh, end of the so <laughs> so um, so with this figures and i like the question uh, you did all of this how much you are getting so any startup i felt any startup uh, in india or anywhere uh, when you start the company for first few years you don't get money back with uh, this system i left my job i i was working like a hell around 15 to 16 hours a day uh, for 8 months and we released it so i am happy to announce that we we started to get money uh, before end of the first year so we, we started to receive the payments uh, with this many customers we currently only operates in india we have scaled this team up to 8 9 people and company is doing very well uh, to provide salaries and infrastructure to all of them our plan is to go uh, worldwide we have a uh, repair desk as a competitor worldwide which has 40 million plus funding uh, they were operating globally it's one of the competitor and it, we are just uh, fighting uh, i mean we are just uh, in a battle with seos and all of this thing so with a startup you you are not bound to any particular role i was doing development uh, for first one year and whole of the system is implemented by me only so front end angular back end laravel i implemented it alone and then later vishwesh joined me as a tech uh, tech guy and he is taking care of it but it's very challenging and interesting as well yeah so these are some bonus tips i wanted to add at the end of the slide is it's because what i felt is uh 
people unnecessary do compli complicated things most of the people when we went at laraval we met uh, we we meet few people from dehradun and uh, we just have formal discussions and they were asking me why can't you use multi uh, big database or uh, 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 like graph database and all these database i or uh, uh, this architectures all of these fancy terms or architectures uh, separation of concerns and all this i i say okay these are all things you can implement at any time what you need is keep it simple make it work go to the market get the feedback from customer keep it improving so what we did is uh, keep it simple not not having lot more complexities and we have implemented a very efficient feedback mechanism and we almost received 400 plus suggestions on a email and on a call it's around 1000 suggestions so customer drives you he guides you what they need because i am the software is for laptop and computer repair shop and i am not expert in that field i don't know what they need so they need vendor id which i was not aware they do in a dealer they know, do amcs they do everything so they guide us they ask uh, uh, inside the system we have provided that option future request so with a simple thing they just request the future with live chat they can ask us okay do these do that uh, so i think keep it simple don't unnecessary uh, add complexities like big database or uh, this uh, uh, fancy terms uh, then again i always felt uh, you don't need to have a big bigger teams to achieve something with my own experience we don't need bigger teams with a small teams you can uh, like uh, if i I, sh I have shown this to anyone like i have these many databases and these many tables they were asking me why don't you have any database architecture or uh, db person db administrator who take care of all this so i prefer rather than paying to the employee i prefer paying to the service aws service is really nice uh, I, I i have done some crazy things uh, when i have more than 100 plus customers i changed my projects url follow url so initially it was bitefacesmartcenter.com so we changed it to biteface.in and it's one of the challenging thing i did the reason is we have email sms whatsapp notifications i don't want any of that link to be broken so inside the load balancer i have written some rules uh, as well as apache uh, which redirect traffic from that url to new url so i and uh, at that time uh, i i was stuck on some point configurations so i took i paid 100 dollar to aws support they came live uh, and we have a call for one or two hours and issue get resolved so rather than taking like i always felt they were the best person to guide you they just do that thing and i i mean as a startup you cannot afford to have a separate uh, devops engineer separate uh, db engineers and everything so pay for the services so that's the idea uh, scalability and all of these things i don't worry at all about it when i started i, I have rds with 2gb small instance ec2 2gb currently my ec2 is just a medium size which serves millions of request 12 million plus request per month and all of these databases what simple thing i do is i just keep close eye on uh, bills as well as services i use cloud watch how much traffic i have i am getting and follow the recommendations like uh, at some point we we found that we are uh, having performance issues so i just because a uh, number of connections with a uh, to small they have a limit of 20 uh, connections uh, can run concurrently and we have more than uh, 300 plus customers so we just changed uh, rds instance from small to medium and everything works so it's it's very easy to scale with all of these facilities uh, or infrastructure so scaling is never been an issue for me so yeah launch your product quickly and implement an efficient feedback system that's what i can say i think yeah that's it i am done with it any questions